These are girls from the Rebecca home. They have come here from all over America, including Hawaii and the West Indies. Along with the young boys from the anchor home at Zapata, Texas, they are told they cannot stay. Formerly drug addicts, rebellious, runaways, prostitutes, rock and roll enthusiasts, these girls have now given their lives to Christ, and as you see, are happily singing praises unto our Lord. Thousands of Americans feel, as Brother Roloff does, that these homes should not be closed and that these precious girls and boys be turned back out onto the streets without guidance and supervision. And so, as news spread that the homes were ordered closed, preachers, parents, political leaders, and friends came to stand up for these ministries. Among them was Texas State Representative Clay Smothers of Dallas. Who's going to take the kids if they close down this place? Who gonna, DHR going to take this man's kids? DHR? What can DHR do with these children? These children can teach DHR a heck of a lot. They can teach them about decency, honesty, and morality. They can teach them about citizenship. They can teach them about pride. They can teach them about Christianity, and they can teach about this. From South Carolina, Marine Lieutenant Cleve McClary, who gave much of his body and suffered through 26 major operations fighting in Vietnam. His lovely wife, Deanna, who stood by his side, also came to stand with our girls. Girls, y'all know what's happening. I'm already filling up just looking at you. I love y'all so much. I have just spent the day with them, and they are just so precious. You know, most of them told me today, you know, they said, we're not what we want to be, but thank God we're not what we were. Yeah. And I think that's so beautiful. I was just thinking as I was listening to all the men talk and looking out at these beautiful faces and these precious girls, thinking of the time that I shared with them today and the things that they told me and the love that they have in their hearts. And they are learning something so important here. They're learning what it's like to be a lady. They're not criminals. They are young women learning how to be young women and how, into, how to live in the world today as young Christian women with the right moral standards, the right beliefs, the right dress code. They're precious, and I love y'all, and you know it, don't you? Yeah. You know, I just want to share this verse for y'all. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. I just wish I had years to spend with you because I love you that much, and Cleve and I do. We care about you, and I think you can see that other people care also. And now I'd like to introduce my wonderful husband, a real Christian warrior, a man really dedicated to his country, but above all, to his God. To you, dear Cleve, I write this with pride. For it's men like you fighting side by side Amen. that makes this world a better place to live. But oh, what a price you had to give. From hippies and yippies and draft dodgers too, oh, yeah. I'm sure it made fighting lonely and blue. We can't replace your eye or your hand of the miserable days you had in Japan. But one day there will come on this lonely shore a savior so great who will say, suffer no more. This, this world will end all of its worry and strife 
And to you, dear Cleve, there will be an eternal life. <laughs> Folks, this is the kind of mother, the kind of wife that Dr. Roloff is producing in this home. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. In this world of give and take, there are not enough people willing to give what it takes. Amen. I thank God for folks like you that will come so far like you Amen. have today and take a stand. And be willing to give what it takes for the freedom that we know and are willing to die for in America tonight. My country is a free land of liberty, a B.I.C. The land where my father died, land of the children's pride, from every Representative of the pastors who came to stand were those who had been in similar conflicts with the state in their own various localities. Many, like Brother Roloff, had gone to jail for their convictions that only Christ can be head of the church and that the church is subject only to Christ, not the state. Greg Dixon, pastor of the Indianapolis Baptist Temple, remarked that what took place this historic week was a long, hard look at the old-fashioned doctrine of separation of church and state. Licensure means control, or at least authority with a licensing power over the licensee. There's no question but that the church ordained of God is licensed by divine authority of the Word of God, and not the state. Brother Roloff asked me in my meek and timid way to deliver a little discourse this evening, and uh, so I said I'd be glad to. <coughs> licensure is wrong. Amen. It's sinful. It is a method of control in socialistic and communistic states all over the world. And unless we have some people that have the backbone to stand while there's time to stand, we're going to lose our freedoms in short order. We are rekindling a historic spirit, a scriptural spirit, and what I'm saying, they're not going to hang a license on my wall. More than six years ago, the Department of Welfare from Austin came to Corpus and spent five days, Monday through Friday. My lawyer, a precious friend, came to my office. It seemed like it was five o'clock or something in the afternoon. The day was done. He said, Brother Lester, I've got a piece of paper I want you to sign. At Artesia Hall in Houston, somebody died. But they seem to have forgotten that that was not particularly a Christian home, but it was a licensed home. And the child abuse happens to be found in licensed homes. Right. You will not find child abuse in a Christian home. Amen. Christians are not mean people. Amen. They're kind people. Amen. And uh, he said they're gonna they're closing all of them and said, Brother Olaf, let's buy some time. They'd worked out an agreed judgment and said, Would you go ahead and sign it right here, Brother Olaf? Sign it and that'll get us some more time. They're gonna close you. And oh, what a horrible thought that was. They're going to close you, and you'll be out of business. You won't have a girl's home. And 
So I signed my name to that document. And that's where the trouble started. I signed away my birthright. I just signed an agreement that I would try to get or be willing to try to get a license to operate the homes. I never knew what that signature would bring. Had I known, I'd have chopped my own arm off before I'd have signed it. After a few days, I said to Brother Harry, I said, I, I don't want that license. I can't have it. My conscience will be gone. And I said, the book that I promised to go by 40 years ago and more, it will not be my rule for faith and practice if I accept the state rules. No man can go by the Bible and state rules at the same time. They're poles apart, boys. And so he said, uh, I said, go appeal that thing. Just go appeal it. I mean, go tell them I don't want it. I can't have it. There's no place in my life I can take a license from the state. I, I'd be untrue to Jesus, his lordship, the administrator of the Holy Spirit, and I'd be untrue to my Bible, and Jesus would not be Lord. And I said, and he said, all right, if that's what you want me to do. He came back and he said, Brother Lester, it's too late. I said, what do you mean too late? He said, you only have 10 days to appeal and a great judgment. And it's too late. And that's been the tormentor and the albatross around my neck for all these years. When we went to Judge Dunham in this city, first of all, my lawyer, uh, Brother Charles Lowry, said, Judge, could we have prayer? Brother Wolof, will lead us in prayer. He declined the offer. And then we said, second, could we get a ruling on the Constitution? And he said, no, sir, I'm not going to give a ruling on the Constitution. And from that day until this, I've seen nothing but kangaroo courts and miscarriages of justice. I've never had the privilege of 12 American men or women sitting in a jury box to just study the facts in the case, never. I've never had a ruling on the Constitution. They've never allowed me. They don't allow me to be tried in Corpus Christi. I have to go 200 miles. That's further than you can subpoena a witness to appear. And so, I find myself tonight at the end of the legal trail. This, tonight at midnight. And I'm going to raise some questions. And then I'm going to seek to answer them. Tonight at midnight, death is to be set in over on all of this work. There are three homes or three schools that's to die tonight at midnight, according to the judgment of Charles, Judge Charles Matthews Court. The Park Avenue Day School has had its 34th graduation. It's dead at midnight tonight. Where mothers and dads have wanted to put their children through the years. Our little buses have crossed this city taking children to the Park Avenue Christian Day School. But it goes because it doesn't have a license and never will have a license. The mothers and dads will not have their children on our lovely playground, air-conditioned school building, or anything else with the lovely, old-fashioned, wonderful teachers that have been teaching many years. The second death will take place at Zapata.